All right, hey guys, um, it's uh, me, Mrs. Van Torn, here for your Geometry Note Section 2.1. Lots of writing. I'm just going to warn you guys ahead of time. So uh, get your writing hats on. Uh, we're going to talk about conditional statements and converse statements, and the objective today is to be able to recognize conditional statements as an if-then and recognize converses of them, which is gonna, you're going to switch the if and the then parts, the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay, an example of a conditional statement. Um, is one that should hopefully relate to all of us. If the Detroit Tigers beat the Yankees, then they will play in the World Series. Or if all of your test scores are 75% or higher, then you will not fail geometry class. Both of these are examples of what we call conditional statements because they have the words if and they have the words then. Okay, if you can identify in a conditional statement, then there are parts to conditional statements. So this section is how do you identify the parts of a conditional statement. There are two parts, two, to a conditional statement. One is called the hypothesis, this is one of your vocabulary words, and one is called the conclusion. So how do you identify them? You take the if statement and the then statement, you put boxes around them. These will never move. The statement right after the if is the hypothesis, and the statement right after the then is the conclusion. So this statement is my hypothesis. So I write H for hypothesis, the Detroit Tigers, beat the Yankees. That's it. That's my hypothesis statement. What is the conclusion? So I write C for conclusion. The statement right after the then, not including the then. So you would write, they will play in the World Series. And you're done. All right. I want you guys to pause the video and try the second one on your own. Identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of this statement. If all of your test scores are 75% or higher, then you will not fail geometry class. Once you get a chance to write it down, restart the video and let's check out the answer. All right, my hypothesis is this statement. All of your test scores are 75% or higher. All of your test scores are 75% or higher. The conclusion, this one, you will not fail geometry class. you're finished. Okay, let's talk about truth values of statements. Truth values are simple. They're either true or they are false. So if you can say a statement is false, then you have to be able to give an example of why it's false. And that example is what we call a counterexample. So when they say give the truth value, that means it is either true or false. And if it's false, if it's false, you must provide a counterexample. All right, for example, if the Detroit Tiger Tigers beat the Yankees, then they will play in the World Series. True or false? This is actually a false statement. Why? What if it's the first game of the season? If it's the first game of the season and they beat the Yankees, that does not necessarily mean they're going to win the World Series. So, false. If it is the first game of the season, it does not mean they'll play the World Series. Just give me one example. 
So a conditional statement must always be true. And if you can just just give me one example why this statement would not be true. Here's my example. Didn't say when they have to beat the Yankees, so if it was the first game, it would not be true. All right. How about this one? Second one. If all your test scores are 75% or higher, then you will not fail geometry class. True or false? Well, this is actually false. Counterexample. What if you only take two tests and you don't finish all the rest? You could pass them, but still fail geometry class. So this is what I mean about coming up with a, a counterexample. Sometimes it seems like it's logical for the moment, but you got to think about the great big picture. So if you can find any one example to show it's false, then do so. Okay. Let's talk about how to use a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a circle within a circle. And in a conditional statement, the if is the hypothesis. This is the if part, the hypothesis. The then is the conclusion. So if you want to look at it this way with another circle, the hypothesis goes inside the little circle. The conclusion goes in the big circle. So the hypothesis and conclusion, this is how you work with a Venn diagram. So I'm going to draw a Venn diagram for these two pictures. It says, if the Detroit Tigers beat the Yankees, then they will play in the World Series. So I draw a circle, and I draw another circle. This, the little circle has to be the Detroit Tigers beat the Yankees. So we're going to abbreviate Tigers beat Yankees in the little circle. What goes in the big circle? They will play in the World Series. So we'll just write play World Series. And you're finished. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a Venn diagram for this one. It says all your test scores are 75% or higher. So we're going to make a circle. Make another circle. And we have tests are 75%. All tests. 75%. What's in the big circle? Pass geometry. And that's how you make a Venn diagram for statements. Okay, let's talk about writing a converse. This is the key to writing converse. You have to switch the hypothesis with the conclusion. So, for my next example, when it says write the converse, this is my hypothesis, and this is my conclusion, and I'm literally going to switch them around. The if and the then do not switch. So if I'm writing the converse, I write if, now I write x plus 3 equals 12, then, now I write my original hypothesis, x equals 9. True or false? Well, if x plus 3 equals 12 and I solved it, does x equal 9? Yes, it does. This is a true statement. So truth value is true. I don't have to do anything else with it. Let's talk about this one. How do you write the converse? I would write if, now I need to put in my conclusion. Remember, these have to switch. If a equals 5, then a squared equals 25. What's really interesting is that in the original conditional statement, if a squared equals 25, then a equals 5, the original statement is false. Because a could equal negative 5. Think about it. Negative 5 times negative 5, a squared, does equal positive 25. They're saying the only conclusion is it can be positive 5, but in reality it could be negative 5. But the nice thing is, the interesting thing is, is that the converse is true. So sometimes the original 
conditional could be false, but the converse could be true. Okay, the last thing we have to understand is how to write a conditional statement. So they're not going to give it to you. Remember, a conditional means it has to have the words if and then. And this statement, an acute angle measures less than 90 degrees, is, does not have the words if or then in it. So I find my verb, and the verb is measures. This is the verb. This is the action word. So what we have to have is the first part is my, is my hypothesis. We have to have an acute angle. The conclusion is where the action takes place. So this is going to be my conclusion. Now I just have to figure out how to write it. So I'm going to write if, now what do we have to have? An acute angle. So I'm going to write an angle is acute. That has to be met. That's my condition. That must be met. Comma. Then what must be true? The angle's measure is less than 90. So I'm going to write its measure. is less than 90 degrees. And I wrote a conditional statement. So this is an example of writing a conditional statement. Okay, don't forget this is our Venn diagram. This is my if part. This is my then part. So I like to caveman talk. I write if apple then fruit, like a caveman. Now, I don't mind if you caveman talk, but let's try to make it correct English. So if something is an apple, then it is a fruit. So you can caveman talk to get the main idea, that's fine, but then try to make it sound like a regular sentence when you, regular conditional sentence. All right, that's it for your lesson. Um, be prepared to come to class tomorrow and work. Very beginning of class, I'm going to give you a couple more examples to make sure you have it, and then we have a book assignment prepared for you. You guys have a great night. Thanks.